for the Kinkarok Troupe is the one I started with 30 years ago. And they were your basic old baboon troupe at the time, and which means males were aggressive and society was highly stratified. And then about, by now, almost 20 years ago, something horrific and scientifically very interesting happened to that troupe. The Kikarok troupe took to foraging for food in the garbage dump of a popular tourist lodge. The trash included meat tainted with tuberculosis. The result was that nearly half the males in the troupe died. In that troupe, if you were aggressive, and if you were not particularly socially connected, socially affiliative, you didn't spend your time grooming and hanging out, if you were that kind of male, you died. Every alpha male was gone. The Kikarok troop had been transformed. And what you were left with was twice as many females as males, and the males who were remaining were, you know, just to use scientific jargon, they were good guys. They were not aggressive jerks. They were nice to the females. They were very socially affiliative. It completely transformed the atmosphere of the troop. And when new adolescent males would join the troop, they'd come in just as jerky as any adolescent males elsewhere on this planet. And it would take them about six months to learn, we're not like that in this troop. We don't do stuff like that. We're not that aggressive. We spend more time grooming each other. Males are calmer with each other. You do not dump on a female if you're in a bad mood. And it takes these new guys about six months and they assimilate this style. And you have baboon culture. And this particular troop has a culture of very low levels of aggression and high levels of social affiliation. And they're doing that 20 years later. I would say what we've learned from the Whitehall study from the study of the non-human primates is the conditions in which people live and work are absolutely vital for their health. This may sound a little fanciful, but I think what we're trying to create is a better society. The implications both of the baboons and of the British civil servants is how can we create a society that has the conditions that allow people to flourish. And that's where this is heading, to create a better society that promotes human flourishing. So what do baboons teach the average person in there? Don't bite somebody because you're having a bad day. Don't displace them on them in any sort of manner. Social affiliation is a remarkably powerful thing, and that's said by somebody who lives in a world where ambition and drive and type A-ness and all of that sort of thing dominates. And one of the greatest forms of sociality is giving rather than receiving, and all of those things make for a better world. Another one of the things that baboons teach us is if they're able to, in one generation, transform what are supposed to be textbook social systems sort of engraved in stone, we don't have an excuse when we say there's certain inevitabilities about human social systems.